Okay, you will not believe this. The Bias BBC, for the first time, have done something right, which makes me question everything and everyone. Okay, this is either someone going rogue in the BBC, or it's controlled opposition, it smokes and mirrors, they're trying to make us think that they care about the net zero rebellion, or they've learned their lesson. Mm, no, I don't think it's the third one. So, what we have is BBC Panorama, they did a special episode on net zero and uh, the low traffic neighborhoods and 15 minute cities to, to actually criticize it. They actually talked to people, they brought, they, they did it in an impartial way, relatively, for the BBC, relatively. It's absolutely brilliant. Not really sure what's happened there. Maybe somebody missed the meeting. Um, or, as I said, it could just be a part of the controlled opposition movement, as we always say, that they, they, you know, they do it every now and then to make us think, see, they are being impartial. They are trying to show all sides of arguments every single time. At the same time, I'm glad that they did this program because at least they showed the other side of the story. Thank you. So, it's called uh, The Road Wars, the uh, Neighborhood Traffic Chaos. Government plans to reduce traffic are turning neighbor against neighbor, costing millions. Low traffic neighborhoods largely aim to persuade their drivers to ditch their vehicles for short journeys and walk, cycle, or take the bus instead. Reporting for Panorama, Justin Rolat um, finds some drivers pitted against supporters of low traffic neighborhoods and networks in what has become a battle between those who believe the schemes will reduce congestion and pollution and those who want the freedom to drive wherever they want. It is brilliant. I have spoken to some uh, LTN or the, the low emission zone supporters. They are special creatures. They genuinely believe if you close off certain roads and block roads, you will reduce traffic. You will increase traffic, you idiot. And you're going to concentrate pollution in certain areas. You're moving it from one place. You're putting it somewhere else. <laughs> it's a cash cow scheme. And it's, it helps the governments, the, the local authorities and cities to have more data on you, to control you. Obviously, that's always been the problem. That, you know, what, why should we trust the state that much to have that much control over our movement? These are the same people who have been going around pretend, uh, saving and protecting the, the free movement with the European Union. The Ramonas love free movement, but not in their own neighborhood. It makes no sense. So, they've spoken to a number of people in this program. Uh, one of them uh, was uh, this guy, Richard uh, Chowerton, um, who, uh, who runs a roofing business based in Kentish Town. Uh, for the last uh, 20, year, 20 years, he's been doing it. He explains uh, the hassle. And he says the introduction has caused him uh, as their uh, LTNs, their low traffic neighborhoods, can add up to 50 minutes to a journey at rush hour. So yeah, more traffic and more pollution. Well done, guys. Now, this guy and his team uh, have uh, accumulated thousands of pounds in fines for breaking the rules on driving in LTNs. They're refusing to pay the fine. Each fine is 130 pounds. But the businessman tells BBC News climate editor, Justin Rowlatt, that he has successfully appealed every time. That is also interesting. I think it could be a good lesson for all of us um, because we had uh, rebellions uh, in, in most places in Birmingham and thousands of people refused to pay the fines. The council was forced to write them off. And maybe this could also be a good method uh, to do the appeal uh, because most of the time, clearly, uh, the people who are running these schemes, they don't even know what they're doing because it's run by bureaucrats in an office so they just uh, they're just all over the place. So I think uh, you you might be able to appeal most of the fines if you have received any in your local area, and then at the end just refuse to pay it. And what are they going to do if everybody refuses to pay? They can't arrest everyone. Um, but un unless obviously things change. Now the issue with this is that central government, especially under Boris and Theresa May, these guys created the mechanism for local authorities to do this. It wasn't imposed by central government, and now we have central government saying, yeah, we're not in favor of this. Rishi Sunak says he doesn't like it and all this. Yeah, we get it. But you allow them to do it in the first place. So take some responsibility, because your net zero ministers and all these idiots, uh, they, they, they were the ones who created this climate for uh, local authorities and all these mayors, so-called mayors, 
to do this and now you're opposing it. You did it. Anyway, um, this is the issue and this is the best way to actually say both sides have been completely idiotic when it comes to central and local governments. But central government now have, have a chance to make things different. I know they don't have the power to completely veto everything local authorities do, but they can do something. Change their narrative. Tell the truth. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.